Hello, I'm a true boy. Just welcome to the month of September. Praise God. This thing, you know, they, they always say Ember month, Ember month, Ember month. Hey, 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 hey. This thing. Before Satan ever was, God was. Praise God. He, you know, every divination, every meaning traces itself to God because God spoke first. So, so don't ever put your mark on what the devil has said or the meaning the devil has given. He's always wrong. <laughs> you know, exa good example. You remember in the book of Genesis, the Bible says they were naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Yeah? He said they were naked and they were not ashamed. All right. And then you find later on when they ate the fruit, they hid themselves and God came and said, where are you? And he says, we hid ourselves because we were naked. Huh? <laughs> Hold on here. You were naked. Didn't you know it before? They knew they were naked, the Bible says, and they were not ashamed. So how come now they were ashamed being naked? I'll tell you what happened. You know, some people, you know, we, we had all these teachings growing up until the Spirit of God began to open our understanding to His truth. Now, some people say when they ate the fruit, their eyes suddenly opened and then they saw, ah, we are naked. No, no, no. Listen, let me tell you the truth. When they ate that fruit, nothing happened to them. When I mean nothing happened to them, their eyes didn't open any. Their spiritual understanding did not open one second, one bit. No, it didn't. What happened? Because they believed Satan, telling them to eat the fruit against God's instruction. Now, that's all Satan was looking for. He was looking for them to act on one word that he was going to give to them. And they did. The moment they did, then Satan decided to attack their confidence first. He was the one that told them, hey, you are naked. Now imagine, imagine he, he telling them, you are naked. Say, yes, we know we are naked. Hey, look at you fools. Do you know what nakedness is? Oh, we know. It means being open, being bare, being, I mean, having nothing to hide. He said, look at you. Who has deceived you? To be naked means he gave them a new interpretation of what it means to be naked. And that causes shame. Are you following me now? It causes shame. So now, when God showed up, they went to hide themselves. And that's the reason when God came and he said, we hid ourselves because we were naked. God's, re God's reply was, who told you now the actual um, translation actually say who told you naked <laughs> praise god that's what god said to them who told you naked what was god saying he didn't say god didn't say who showed you you are naked he said who told you naked i'll tell you why the word you know this was in english so i trust the Spirit will help you the word God gave to them as being the meaning of nakedness wasn't the word Adam was giving back to him. See, God had said to them, now you are naked. It means good. It means nothing to hide. It means, I mean, you are plain. You are, this is you. Praise God. And, and, and But now when Adam spoke back to God, what the word he used that was translated naked was not the same word that they knew before and they were not ashamed. So that's why God answered them. So who, who gave you this word? Not me. So you must have been listening and doing what I told you not to do. Praise God. So, so you see, the, the devil came to change the meaning of nakedness to them. Isn't it not amazing till this day we are holding on to the devil's meaning? <laughs> Praise God. But, but you see, what I'm trying to say is this. Don't put a stop at the devil's meaning. Why? Because before he came to give that meaning, there was the true meaning of that word. Go for the true meaning. So how do I find the true meaning? 
Holy Ghost is there. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will guide you into all truths. So, so what is the meaning of Ember Month? Is it God that named it September, October, November? Hey, hey, language came from God. <laughs> Whoever named it got his wisdom from God somehow. So no, these months were the months where so-so gods were worshipped. Hey, 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 hey. Who brought worship first? God. So there is no other worship. There is no worship that can go out of the earth except God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So what do you mean? You mean people that are sacrificing to idols, are they worshipping God? The Lord will help you to understand. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't want to deviate from what we're talking about. Let's, let's go. Let's finish this up. There's just so much inside my heart that I want to share with you. Right? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Understanding and clear utterance to be a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now we are in... I was talking to you yesterday last month praise god i was talking to you yesterday about 16 and it says else when thou shalt bless with the spirit and i explained that to you yesterday how shall he that is that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks saying he understandeth not what thou sayest for thou verily giveth thanks well did you see that yes you have given thanks well and the, you know the thing about speaking in tongues when we speak in tongues real tongues now you are speaking the exact mind of God. So when he says you give thanks, well, that's true. You give accurate thanks. But there's a problem. See? For thou verily give it, give it thanks well, but the other is not edified. The other person is not helped. See? Yeah. So I, 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 I'm talking to someone and I just speak in other tongues. And in other tongues, I actually said, I'm going to leave this place now because um, um, something, is, something bad is going to happen in this place. And I just say that in tongues. And then I finish. And then when I finish, I get up. Because when you speak it, see, just like, I, 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 um, what's his name? Um, Ezekiel said, see, God told me, stand up on your feet and I'll speak to you. And then the next thing he said, the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. So when you give the utterance, the spirit of God enters you. You know what I mean by the spirit of God enters you? Not that he's out of you. See, the empowerment, he, the an energy comes inside of you to do what you have just said. See, so sometimes you want to heal, you know, you, you deal, you, you get into that place. You want, you want to minister by the gift of healing. And then you find out something, it works by utterance. So you see someone that is sick. Sometimes you have a challenge with your face. Should I, should I not go? Listen, if you will bring your mind together and author it, says, I'm going to come there and lay my hands on you now. And you are going to be healed. Now, the moment you author that word, you will feel, literally feel an energy inside of you. <clears throat> now, when you feel that, do. That's what Samuel told so Do as occasion serves you. So when you, when you feel that, go ahead and lay your hands and you will see instant healing. I'm telling you the truth. So, so you just speak, spoke and said, hey, you know, you just spoke in other tongues. Then suddenly you, you feel an energy, an urge to leave. And then you get up and say, I, I need to leave this place. I need to leave this place. And then you leave. The other person didn't know why you were leaving. Because you just actually spoke and said, I'm going to leave this place because something is going to happen here that we will not like. And then you leave. The other person doesn't know. And then he's still there. You may even say, ah, let's leave together. And I, I don't know. I, I, I need to still do some things. And then you leave. And then something happens. Say, oh, how come? You see, the person wasn't blessed. You were blessed. But the person wasn't blessed. See? So, so Paul says, desire... Now that's what he said. Next verse now, he says, mm. he said, for, ver for thou very give it thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all. Did you see that? 
Was Paul boasting here? He was telling them the truth. I speak with tongues more than you all. So Paul was a master at speaking in tongues, <laughs> praise God. Now, he, he didn't say he speaks in tongues more than you. I, I believe if Paul had come to Nigeria, oh, oh, he would have seen people that spoke in tongues more than him. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, we pray in this nation. We pray. We, they are, they, you see, that is what has held this nation. That's why the, Nigeria is confusing to the rest of the world. I have not seen people that pray like we do in Nigeria. You know, someone say, all our prayer, where is the result? You don't know. You don't know. I'm telling you the truth. You don't understand. Until the day the Lord will open your eyes and open your understanding, then you will know, thank God, there were praying people in this nation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Did you see that? Where? In the church when I am ministering. Now people read this and say, we shouldn't speak in tongues in church at all. So we should only pray in English. When you get to your house in your closet, you can speak in tongues. That's wrong. That's not what he's saying. He said, in church when I am ministering to you, I would rather speak five words in, in, in in your understanding than 10,000 words in tongues. Now that is in church when he is standing to minister. That's what he's talking about. He's not referring to when we are praying corporate prayer in, in church, you know, you know, like you go for service and it's time for prayer. You know, he's not all that I say, some, you know, somebody by just rope, shantaka, and I say, no, 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 you're doing the wrong thing. Paul says, in church, you should rather speak five words. Now, he didn't say in church, don't speak in tongues. He said, I would rather, no, this is better. Why? Because other people don't understand. See, that's the meaning. Now, he says, brethren, verse 20, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice, be ye children, but in understanding be men. Grow up to maturity. Stop this children thing we do. You know, trying to access who, who speaks in tongues, whose tongues is better than the other. He's, he's childish. <laughs> Praise God. He's childish. So, so you, you want to oppress somebody with tongues. Maybe, maybe there's a sister you're liking in church and then you, you want to just show that you're very spiritual. You people do all these things. That's childish. Praise God. He says, in understanding, be men. You don't come to God to play. You know what I mean by that? Serious business. That doesn't mean you squeeze your face whenever you're praying. No. What I'm saying, everything in the presence of God has a meaning. So don't be careless and miss out when you're in the presence of God. In the law, it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto these people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, say the Lord. Now this is in the book of Isaiah. He said this, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Did you see this? Tongues is for a sign for unbelievers. Mm, did you see that? Mm. Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Why did he say tongues are for a sign? Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. So why is Paul saying tongues are for a sign? He means you are, you are in the midst of people. You are preaching the gospel. And suddenly they begin to speak in other tongues. Oh, what, what do you know then? They have believed. This guy has believed. This guy has believed. So he, he, when he says tongues are for a sign, to unbelievers. He's not saying you go before unbelievers and you say, Gosh, ka, ka, bo, kash, and I say, ah, hmm, this person is a believer. No, he's, you know, you remember Peter when he went to Cornelius' house. He was just ministering. You know, Jesus told him and the other disciples, this is how you will know when people have believed. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And then Peter was preaching and he was just preaching and preaching. Suddenly, you know, you know he, he just saw someone go, Rakavush, Lebarus, Yakata. And then, He's like, what did I just hear? And that person goes, Lebroche Ketala. Uh -uh. What's going on? Then another person goes, La Brukushke Degebo. And then suddenly the whole place went on fire. Praise God. Everyone was speaking in other tongues. Like, 
What's going on here? That's why Peter said, oh, what's my own? He said, Jesus said, this is how I know they have belief. For we heard them speak with tongues. Praise God. Hey, <laughs> You know my time is up. <laughs> Praise God. We are going to continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. Listen, today I declare over your life. <clears throat> the gate of the month of September is opened unto you. Therefore, I declare that every blessing that has been apportioned for you this month, day after day, your own gate shall be opened to receive them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the blessing of September. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.